damped harmonic motion. If we plot the position versus time of a simple harmonic oscillator, such as an ideal spring, we see that the graph has a constant amplitude. The amplitude stays the same throughout the motion. In an ideal case, this motion would continue forever, until the oscillator was acted on by a force that changed its motion. This is because, for the ideal simple harmonic oscillator, the total mechanical energy stays the same. Remember that total mechanical energy is the sum of the kinetic and potential energies. In the case of our ideal spring, if we ignore gravity for now, there is only translational kinetic energy and elastic potential energy. When the spring is at its highest, most compressed point, it has stored elastic potential energy only. As it moves downward, it converts some of that elastic potential energy into kinetic energy. At the equilibrium position, the energy is all kinetic with no elastic potential energy. In its stretched position farthest from equilibrium, it has converted that kinetic energy back into elastic potential energy. And as it moves back upward, it converts elastic potential energy back into kinetic energy and so on. The mechanical energy is conserved in the ideal spring in this way. In reality though, there's friction in a spring. As a spring moves, some of its kinetic energy is converted into heat energy through that friction, so that a compressed spring will not stretch as much as it was compressed, and it will continue to store less and less elastic potential energy as time goes on, until it comes to rest at its equilibrium position again. The amplitude is not constant in this type of motion. This type of motion is called damped harmonic motion, where the damping is the decrease in the amplitude of the motion over time. In damped harmonic motion, the smallest amount of damping that will bring the oscillator back to equilibrium is called the critical damping. When the amount of damping in a system is less than the critical damping value, the motion is underdamped. And when the amount of damping is greater than the critical value, the system is overdamped. As you can see, a system takes the longest amount of time to reach equilibrium when it is overdamped. There are many mechanisms and forces that we will talk about that can contribute to damping in an oscillating system.